All right, guys. So hey, just like that, we got our pork belly. But uh, let's take a look around here. So uh, small little small town grocery store here, meat market. They got some everything in here. And look at that. You got a green mountain grill there. How about that, guys? The Jim Bowie Green Mountain Grill. Alright, so here's the frozen case where you can pick up a lot of different meats, a lot of different steaks, tri-tips, flat irons, beef tenderloins, porterhouse steaks, bone-in ribeyes, boneless ribeyes. They got some of everything here. Here's all your uh, pellets. So if you're looking for some uh, pellets for your pellet grills. So there they go, the barbecue's delight. Got your B&B charcoal, lump charcoal there. Kingsford, more B&B on the bottom. But what do I see here? There's Yoder, guys. So here you got the Yoder YS640 on the regular cart. This looks like it has the new control system. Your ports to go through here to check your temperatures. Very familiar. But over here, you got the competition card order. And it's from my man Terry Morrow over at Chili the Grillin. It's actually where I got mine from as well. And again, YS640, this one has the grill grates on it. Upper rack, grill gate, grill grate spatula, the new control unit as well. Starting. All right, guys. So the first step that we're gonna do in getting this porchetta put together is we've got to get a, our aromatics, our herbs, and everything together that we're gonna put inside this porchetta. So what we've got here is we've got a little basil. We've got some sage, some rosemary, some uh, flat leaf or Italian parsley, and we've got the fronds from uh, fennel. And so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna actually give this stuff a rough chop. We're gonna pop it in our food processor. We're gonna put some oil in there, some olive oil to be exact, uh, extra virgin. <laughs> and we're gonna actually make us a paste that we're gonna put inside uh, all over this pork belly. So let's go ahead and get this stuff chopped up and uh, let's get this uh, herb paste, if you will, put together. All right, guys, so hey, we got our uh, paste put together. We're gonna take a look at it here. And it's uh, kind of looking like I want it to. And there you go. So this will work out well as we uh, get this spread all over this pork belly uh, when we're ready to put it together. So hey, we got our aromatics put together. Um, it's time for us to bring on the star of the show. So let's get the pork belly out. Let's get it over here and let's get it rubbed down and let's get this thing going, all right? I'll bring you right back.
All right, guys, so hey, we got our pork belly ready to go here. I decided I was going to go ahead and cut it in half. I was going to do like a really long pork tenderloin or a porchetta and decided, no, I'm going to go ahead and cut it down. Uh, so uh, what we did here was I went ahead and cut away some of the pork belly meat um, that we're going to substitute. Instead of using a pork tenderloin, we're going to use this pork belly meat that we have here. We're going to put that inside this porchetta, which is going to help it hold its form when we go to tie it and we cook it down and all of that. So uh, you could absolutely use a pork tenderloin if you'd prefer, but I decided, hey, I just want to use some of this pork belly meat since I've got tons of pork belly meat. So that's what we're doing with this. Uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and get this thing scored uh, and get it rubbed down and uh, we're going to get this thing going. And so to score it, I'm using a good old fashioned utility knife because that, that skin is kind of tough, you know, and uh, you need a really, really sharp knife to be able to get through that skin. We're gonna score the skin. We're not gonna cut it down to the meat, okay? So that's very important. We're just gonna score the skin. So we're gonna get this thing flipped over. And we're gonna put some score marks, uh, score lines on this thing. I'm not trying to go with any diamond patterns or anything like that. The purpose of scoring the skin is to help get that fat rendered out. And we're gonna hopefully have this skin get really crunchy like chicharrones. So that's what we're gonna aim for. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing scored up. Okay, so we got the skin side scored, and uh, I'm just gonna come in here and clean up just a little bit of this uh, excess fat that's in here. Not gonna take off too much, because um, we kinda like that, that good fat, man, and it gives lots of flavor there, so we're probably not gonna, I'm probably not gonna take away hardly any of this, actually. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and score the meat side here so that we can uh, help them. when we get this paste put on here, we can really get some of these uh, flavors to get down and penetrate into this, uh, this pork meat. So let's go ahead and score here. And we're being careful not to go too deep. All right, we're gonna turn it over. Or just turn it. So we can get this way now. Alrighty guys, so there you go. So we got this meat scored, we got the skin scored, and uh, man at this point we're gonna go ahead and get this thing seasoned up, alright? So let's get it going. Alright, first up, salt. I'm just giving it a good liberal dosing of salt there. I like a little spice, so hey, we're gonna go ahead and put some of this uh, crushed red chili peppers on here. And we're not gonna go too heavy, but we're gonna get a good little bit on there. Next up, we're gonna add some granulated onion. We're going to add some uh, granulated garlic. We're going to add some uh, fiddle powder. I'm going to add some uh, rosemary garlic. That's that tones, coarse stuff. I kind of like this stuff. So we're going to add some of this in here too. And then next up, I'm just going to add some uh, black pepper. And I'm just kind of massaging all this stuff down into the meat, guys. Then I'm going to grab our little uh, piece of meat that we had here, too. And we're going to go ahead and season that thing up, too. All right, guys. So we went ahead and got this pork belly seasoned up. We got our uh, piece of pork belly that we cut off that we're going to stuff inside seasoned up. And the last thing that I want to do, well, next to the last thing I want to do, is I want to add some fennel pollen. So fennel pollen is a uh, very, um, it's a very good earthy, uh, 
aromatic that's used in uh, in pork belly that just gives it a phenomenal flavor. This stuff is very expensive, so you don't want to use too much, but we definitely want to put some on here. So we're going to sprinkle some of that on here. And if you can't get fennel pollen, you can just absolutely finish uh, with the fennel powder that we used earlier and uh, call it a day. It's up, totally up to you. I have some, so we're going to use it. All right, guys. So, hey, last thing we're going to add to this, lemon zest. So we're going to go ahead and get the zest of a lemon here. All right, so now that we got everything on here, it's time for us to go ahead and get our paste put on. We're just gonna pour it on and rub it in. And then we'll take our final piece of pork belly meat and put it right in there. All right guys, so hey, we got this thing all seasoned up. We got our paste put on. We got our pork, pe uh, we have our piece of pork belly on top in the middle that we're stuffing it with and now it's gonna be time to roll it and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing tied up all right All right, guys. So hey, we got this pork, or uh, this pork belly, all wrapped up. We got it tied up. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and I rotated the knot to the underside or the seam side, so it just helps with presentation later uh, after the cook. So the final step that we're gonna do, and then we're gonna let this thing rest, is we're gonna salt the outside so it can again help pull that moisture out of the skin uh, during the uh, cook or pull the fat out of the skin during the cook. So. We're going to liberally put some salt on top of this skin, guys, and then we're going to let this thing rest and get the grill fired up. And a good trick for this is you can actually put some on your board and roll it over to the, to the salt and it will help pick it up as well. We got our... Uh, our poor cat is ready to go and so all we got to do now is uh, we're gonna let this thing rest I'm gonna go ahead and get the grill fired up and we're gonna put this thing on the spit and we're gonna do a rotisserie style rotisserie on the Weber kettle but a little trick for you guys or a little surprise I should say we have some Australian charcoal that I got my hands on so let me introduce you to this charcoal and let's get this thing going let's do it All right, guys, so again, we got our uh, porchetta all set up here. Uh, we got it all stuffed, we got it tied up, we got it salted, we got our grill. Uh, well, at least we got our charcoal lit. We need to get this thing on a spit. So we got our spit right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing put on so we can get it ready to go on the grill. All right, so just like that, we got our spit put on here and we're ready to get this thing going, man. We're just gonna finish letting that charcoal heat up and uh, get this rotisserie attachment put on and we're gonna get this thing going, guys. It's rotisserie time for the porchetta with some heat beads. Man, y'all come on back. Let's go check this out in a minute, all right?
Heat Beads. Coconut shell charcoal barbecue briquettes since 1970. All right, guys. So, hey, let's talk about what we're doing today. So, again, I was lucky enough to get my hands on some uh, heat beads, which is a uh, coconut shell briquette from Australia. Uh, the first thing that I noticed about this uh, bag of briquettes is that it's really heavy for the size. Like, the charcoal is just really dense. Uh, it, it burns well, and it burns really hot, too. So, I'm really digging this charcoal uh, for the first use. Uh, as you see, I put it in my Weber kettle. I have a split heat zone, and I'm running my uh, rotisserie in between it. Uh, but uh, the briquettes, I mean, they look like normal charcoal briquettes. I mean, this is what you got right here. Um, and it's you know nothing really uh, nothing really different uh, as far as the look goes than what you might have with your uh, Kingsford uh, charcoal briquettes. So I mean the bag doesn't look like you know super big or anything, but for the size it's uh, it's definitely a, a little heavier. 100% uh, natural uh, charcoal and long burn time, premium quality guarantee is what they have uh, stated on the bag. And apparently they've been in business since 1970. So, and I mean, they've got instructions written on the back of the bag. Uh, you know, not really instructions, but suggestions on how to burn the, uh, the charcoal or whatever. It's a pretty decent uh, charcoal, man. I am uh, definitely kind of digging this right now. So, I am going to be totally sad when I run out of this bag because... I don't know if I'll be able to get another bag. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, I do have a bag of briquettes and I do have a bag of lump charcoal that uh, I'll be doing in a later video, but let's talk about what we're doing today. Again, we got these these coconut shell briquettes that we're trying out, so we're doing a porchetta today. So I got a pork belly, went to go see my man Juan over at Westphalia uh, Meat Market in Hutto, and we got us a pork belly from him. I uh, got the full pork belly. Uh, I did decide to go ahead and cut it down just a little bit, uh, just for uniformity uh, of making the porchetta as I plan to do. Uh, so we went ahead and we pulled out our utility knife and got us a good clean cut through the skin, finished off the cut on the meat side and got us a nice square piece of, uh, or a rectangle piece of uh, pork belly to make this porchetta with. We went ahead and took on the, uh, on the uh, one side of it, we cut out a piece of the pork belly so that we could use it to stuff inside. But then what we did was we got our aromatics together and we went ahead and uh, gave them a rough chop, threw them into our food processor and put some uh, olive oil in there and we made a nice little paste out of it. We went ahead and seasoned up our pork belly with all of our different seasonings and uh, we went ahead and applied that paste. We scored the skin on the, uh, on the outside of the pork belly and we scored the meat side before we applied any of our seasonings or the paste. Then what we did was we broke out the charcoal. We got this charcoal put into our Weber kettle. We put it into a double heat zone. We left the middle open as that's where our uh, porchetta is going with the uh, with the rotisserie. And hey, we threw a couple of chunks of uh, hickory wood in place to get us a good hickory flavor into this uh, porchetta. So right now we've just got this porchetta going. The fat seems to be rendering out really nicely. We're trying to achieve a good hard crunchy chicharrones uh, on this cook. And uh, guys, I'm telling you, I've got the vents turned down to almost closed, and the heat is just staying up really well with this coconut shell briquette heat beads from Australia. So if you happen to see some heat beads anywhere, and you guys might be on the fence about buying it, I'm telling you, buy it. If you don't buy it, let me know where you see it, and I'll buy it. So, uh, man, we're going to continue this cook. We're probably about, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half into it so far. We're just going to keep letting it go. We're looking for an internal temperature, 175, 180 on this, uh, on this pork belly, and we'll call it good, man. So right now, we're just going to kick back and let this thing keep doing what it do. You know how the Weber kettle and the rotisserie works. So let's let it keep cooking, guys, and I'll bring you back here when we're ready to get this thing off. All right? All right. Alright guys, so hey, we got our porchetta finished, it's rested, and if you can hear that, it's nice and crunchy. So we're going to get ready to cut into it. Are you excited? I'm excited. You ready for this? It looks good. Yeah? 
We're gonna cut into this and let's check it out. Listen to the crunch, guys. So there you go. Look at that. Looks amazing. Yeah. Look at the crunch on that. Yeah. You can just tell without even tasting it that it's got a good. All right, so uh, you want to do the honors? All right, I'm cut up a little bit of everything. There we go, there you perfect go. bite. Listen to that crunch. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very tasty crunch. That's good. Oh yeah. The actual pork belly is a very tender. Again, I went ahead and smoked this up to about 180, 185 degrees. And then I actually drizzled hot peanut oil over it to help blister the skin at the end there. So uh, this came across pretty good, I think. I think that crunch makes all the difference because the fat on it is super rich. But then when you get to that crunch and it was, it's like game changer. Definitely. Definitely. So guys, hey, porchetta. Uh, people don't do it very often. Um, it's, it's not a hard complex dish to make is fairly simple uh, you can follow this whole video step by step and do your own porchetta whenever you're ready so I would tell you go for it porchetta is fantastic and you can actually make this into sandwiches and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff later mm -hmm. so it's visually stunning it really is it's a it's a fantastic uh, real-time dish but also makes fantastic leftovers so definitely guys if you haven't tried porchetta give it a shot don't be afraid knock it out what do we say? Peace. Peace.